Point of order, Grant Robertson. I think, Mr. Speaker, I just um, seek your guidance uh, as this bill has just been introduced under urgency to the House. Obviously, a few of us are playing catch up to be able to prepare. There is a regulatory impact statement around part one of the bill on the table, but there is no regulatory impact statement dealing with the matters in part two. I um, just request your assistance or your guidance, Mr. Speaker. Should we expect one of those or just blunder on? It's a measured, that is a matter for the government to provide that documentation to support their call, their motion of urgency. Challenge them on it. No doubt it's a point for debate. Well, let's hear it. Yeah. Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, this is obviously not a bill that the government members are very proud of. No. To see the stellar collection of front bench <laughs> heavy hitters who have turned out to support Dr <laughs> Smith on this bill. The, se heavy, you, Nick. the second member to speak from the National Party benches, Alfred Ngaro, couldn't even summon up a five-minute contribution. All the heads are down, they're embarrassed, That's right. sir, because this bill, this bill is just the latest in a string of fiascos that passes for a housing policy under this minister, Mr Speaker. <laughs> the image that I want you to entertain, sir, is of the Honourable Dr Nick Smith standing out in the middle of a paddock somewhere in West Auckland, <laughs> bewildered, pointing in all directions, saying, we're going to build houses here, folks. Yeah. That, that minister here is outstanding in his field. <laughs> he is outstanding in his Building field. And one of the great contributions that he's made to housing policy in the last couple of years has been a minibus tour That's right. where he took me hapless members of the press gallery Every on a never-ending magical mystery tour substations. of cemeteries, <laughs> electrical substations <laughs> and a long <laughs> list of other <laughs> scraps <laughs> and <laughs> remnants. <laughs> the Governor-General's <laughs> residence, Government House even appeared on a list of properties, government properties, that that minister uh, used as the basis for his now famous promise to this parliament that he had 500 hectares of vacant crown yes, land yes. that he was going to use to build housing. No. So that is the great... I mean, look, look, you've got to give it to this minister. He has provided more entertainment for this house in the last couple of years in the form of his housing policies than, uh, than anyone could have realistically hoped for. Mr Speaker, this bill is yet another patch-up job designed to mask the failings of Nick Smith as housing minister. His incompetence is not a reason to put this house into urgency. And to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of tax, taxpayers' money, taxpayers' money, to ram through a bill that simply should not be considered by this House under urgency. The bill has two main parts. The first is to extend the special housing areas legislation by three years. Now, at a pinch, we might have voted for that. At a pinch, you know, the special housing areas. They're a flawed, inadequate, underwhelming it. policy. We voted for it at the first reading, but then when we actually had a serious look at it, we realised how hopeless it was. It's the centrepiece of the government's supply side initiatives. How many houses has it delivered in three years in a city of a million and a half people? Barely 1,300 completed houses. When under this national government, a shortfall of 42,000 houses has accumulated while National has been in office. That shortage is getting worse by about 4,000 dwellings every single year. And the best that this National Government's policy of special housing areas can deliver is 1,300 houses over three years. This bill, sir, is the last whimper of Nick Smith's uh, special housing areas policy. But it is something at least. It's better than nothing, yes. which is why we would vote for it, but not by very much. The best thing that can be said for it is that we'll save eight developers, eight special housing areas in Auckland, will be saved cost uncertainty and uh, the inconvenience 
caused by Nick Smith's failure to properly think through the transition issues as the special housing areas legislation died and the Auckland Unitary Plan came on stream. So, on its own, we would, at a pinch, have voted for part one of this bill, which extends the uh, housing areas and, and uh, housing accords and special housing areas legislation. But, as Andrew Little said, um, the second part, which deals with um, uh, offer back provisions under the Public Works Act <coughs> in relation to government land being used for housing purposes, that, sir, is a whole different kettle of fish. And um, uh, not only do we believe that there is no justification at all for this provision being considered under urgency. It is actually a really bad idea. And if, I think actually it might be quite interesting to, to, uh, to put some bets on the table that, that this bill and these provisions yep, in part two will be the next Nick Smith fiasco. That's right. Uh, in a long line, a long honourable line of fiascos, because what Nick Smith's doing here, he said he's just trying to clarify, and no doubt he's got uh, advice from Crown Law, and I'd uh, ask the Minister to table the advice from Crown Law on this, but he says that he's simply clarifying the position that the government is not required to observe the offer back provisions in the Public Works Act to former owners of, of land when it is changing the designation of um, government-owned land and making it available for state housing purposes, which is interpreted extremely widely uh, by this government. He's saying the position is that the government's not required to offer back uh, that land if it's being used for housing purposes. Well, my question is this, sir. If the law really does say that he's not required yeah. to hand it back, then why is he ramming through a bill under urgency all stages, That's right. if, it's not, if, 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 if the law is clear, if it's not an issue. It's very clear, because the Minister has brought this bill to the House, because he's ramming it through under urgency, it's very clear actually that he is taking away somebody's property rights. And we're not lily livid on the side of the House about powers of acquisition and, and, uh, and the need to uh, 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 prevent land bankers from gaming the system and standing in the way of large new developments that, have, um, that will deliver thousands of new dwellings in the public interest. But if you are going to take away people's property rights, then for goodness sake, think about it seriously. Do it in a way that's transparent and open and subject this bill to the proper scrutiny and expert advice and public submissions that a select committee process would bring. Don't ram it through the House under urgency. It's a serious matter when you're taking away someone's property rights. So treat it seriously. Treat the citizens of, of this nation with the respect they deserve and do it in a way that's thoughtful, careful and considered. There is no possible reason to take these provisions through the House under urgency in 24 hours and to deny the people of New Zealand yeah. the right to have this bill given Why proper scrutiny. No, this is the Minister of Housing fiascos. This is the next fiasco that's coming down the pipeline. And no doubt, in a year's time, we'll be back in the House, uh, Mr Speaker, having to clean up this, uh, this mess, sir. Um, the, 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 the great fiasco of um, Nick Smith and the vacant Crown lands, uh, uh, it wasn't so much that he uh, produced a list that had Government House on it and, and electric, electricity substations and the Mangari Lawn Cemetery. The real fiasco was that he completely failed to consult uh, important stakeholders like Auckland Iwi on his plans to deny them their right of first refusal under the collective redress agreements uh, in Tamaki Makoto. And he thought he could get away with it. I don't know what advice he took on that. But um, he blundered on ahead uh, and, and, uh, with his plan and um, was humiliated by Ngāti Whātua and other members of the Tamaki right. uh, Collective who took him to court and forced him 
to, it wasn't so much a sort of a flip-flop, it was more a kind of a double backflip. And he had to uh, negotiate a humiliating climb down, which, which gave them uh, uh, rights to be development partners and all sorts of commitments about the provision of affordable housing in those developments that he wouldn't, that he wouldn't even offer to Auckland Council when he was negotiating the housing accord. And in this bill, he's had to recognise that uh, that was um, uh, an ignominious defeat. Not only did he cost, what, uh, tens of thousands, even $100,000 or more in legal costs to the Crown, his Crown lands uh, policy was, was delayed by months and months and months. And, uh, <laughs> and what he's had to do, sir, in this bill is say that nothing in part two of this bill will have any impact on collective redress agreements. But he is intending to deny previous owners of land their <coughs> rights under the Public Works Act to an offer back uh, provision. And, sir, this should go to the Select Committee. Very good. Todd Barclay. Thank